Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Greetings and welcome everyone. Hope you can see me down here. Really excited to present to you today from this virtual reality platform. Thank you for taking the time and energy to be here today. I hope this finds you happy, healthy, and positive in these fascinating times. My name is Mike Lebecki. I am a National Geographic Explorer and I'm a Dell ambassador. We're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna to go all over the world and experience the magic, power, and beauty all the way from behind the camera, in front of the camera, directing, producing, using tech in the field, and behind the scenes, of course. I wanna start off with showing you a fun little video, and we're gonna have some fun today with all these different camera angles in virtual reality. So. This is really exciting for me using this new technology, and it's going to be a blast. So please enjoy this first little video. This is Lebecki checking in. Absolutely loving life here on the border of China and Kyrgyzstan. It's definitely an age-old tradition explorers wanting to go on those blank places on the map. The greatest opportunities for exploration these days are in the vertical realm. And Mike Lebecki is the foremost exploratory climber of our age. This is expedition number 50, halfway point to the goal of 100 expeditions. Life is sweet, the time is now, and we'll talk to you soon. The American Alpine Journal documents the most significant climbs all over the world. Mike appears every year because he is always going to incredibly remote places and finding things that nobody's ever seen before. 82 degrees north, right on top of the globe. Most of our athletes go on one, maybe two big trips a year. But Becky goes on like four, five, six expeditions a year. Mike does a ton of research to try to find the last corners of the earth that are completely unexplored. He is obsessed. He needs that summit. He'll go down to Antarctica. He'll hit the tropics, rainforest, above the Arctic Circle. Somewhere potentially unstable politically, like Afghanistan. Let's go to Yemen. You want to go climb in Yemen? Let's go to the weirdest hole on the side of some crazy mountain range and climb some shitty rock. It's just rotten choss. And it'll be awesome. One of the coldest dumps ever taken by man. He has this unwavering psych no matter what the situation. Life is sweet. Sweetness of life, sweetness of bugs. At the point where any other person would break down and crumble and go home and cry to mommy, Lebecki is hitting his stride. Life is sweet. Mike has climbing partners, but most of the time, he's just alone. Half of Mike's expeditions have been solo. But being alone in those intense environments makes you a little bit crazy. He's not crazy crazy, but he's definitely a little bit crazy. Greetings, northern earthlings. There's the earth flowing. We're on the bottom cap, just standing upside down right now, loving life. He has his own expedition language. These weird catchphrases. The time is now, life is sweet. Death and or old age is coming. A lot of people quote the Dalai Lama or, you know, Gandhi at the end of an email. Mike Lebecki quotes himself. Loving life! And he has real affinity for wearing weird fucking animal masks. On the summit, you know, pull out this crazy mask. Honestly, I have no idea what the story is with those plastic masks. Whatever year of the Chinese calendar it is, year of the ram, year of the dragon, year of the rabbit, whatever it is. Horse mask on his head. <laughs> and you think, you know, who is this guy? I think Mike Lebecki is a total enigma. What's this guy all about? Who is the man behind the mask? It's been an honor and privilege to explore this planet and it's taken me to over 85 expeditions and to over 100 countries. And I cannot wait to share with you today uh, some of the most remote, incredible places. We're gonna start off in one of my favorite places and that's in Antarctica. This was a really special expedition with really good friends. And this was for National Geographic. So it was a really exciting trip. 
you know, the, the best part is being out in the field and being able to capture these. But the second best part is being able to bring these stories and these images back to get people to care about the planet. If we're creating emotion with these stories, people are going to care about the planet and it gets us pretty excited. So these are some really good friends of mine. And this is a trip down to Queen Maudland, Antarctica. And boom. Their first stop, a Russian research station, Novolazarevskaya, or Novo, in Antarctica, where they'll catch a short flight to the Wolfat Mountains. So we fly into this old Russian research station in Antarctica. And then all of a sudden we're really here. We're at the bottom of the world. And it's this totally alien place. And it's like we've landed on the ice planet. I can't wait to get into the mountains. But it looks like we've got a problem. Yes, there was a problem. And it was actually a beautiful, exciting, intense problem. And that's what we call catabatic winds. And we were experiencing winds at the Russian base that were well over 100 miles an hour. And those kind of shut down our trip for a little while. While on an expedition, these incredible winds can be your worst enemy. And we were out near the Russian base here, just pretty much training in these winds to see what we were up against. And here's a little glimpse of uh, our trip to Antarctica. This is one of the most challenging environments for a climber you can visit anywhere on planet Earth. A big part of the game is approaching these unclimbed, unexplored mountains and, and looking for the coolest way to get to the top. That for us as climbers is the path. We spent a week ski touring around, looking you know, with binoculars at every mountain within striking distance of us. And this is, without a doubt, the proudest line we found. The environment is so hostile. You die up here in a manner of hours without the right gear and the right expertise. This isn't aid climbing or free climbing or speed climbing. This is just like whatever it takes climbing. But it'll be spicy for sure. Every day, we wake up and we don't know what we're going to be able to do safely. You definitely have to work for everything in Antarctica. Nothing is a given. You have to earn it. Unpredictability. It's about, you know, the unknown. hundreds of mountains that are unclimbed. It's like being an astronaut going up there, going into outer space. You need to have a survival suit on. You need to be prepared for everything. As a counterbalance to, to that extreme consequence and severity is just these moments of surreal, otherworldly beauty. So that was one of the most remote places that you can climb on the planet in Queen Maudland, Antarctica. And even having a rescue there is really, really difficult, even for today's day and age. This was one of my favorite photos from the expedition. And that climb was really, really steep. And you can imagine being in this position here, you're completely focused on what's going on. This was a pretty chilly moment. It's about minus 40 degrees here. And this is where I kind of want to talk about the two different ways I experience an expedition. The first one is joy. I think joy is the meaning of life. We're all pursuing joy in some way. So there's joy. We have so much joy out there. The second way that I experience these expeditions or life is what I call pre-joy. And that's a moment like this where it's minus 40 degrees or you're just having a tough day, you're homesick. Whatever those tough times in life are that we have, if we just call them pre-joy, 
They're a form of joy that's leading to the ultimate joy. So that optimism and attitude, especially on an expedition, is really important. And of course, we can just take that to everyday life. Uh, my grandmother was a big inspiration in my life, and we got to name this tower after her. So this was uh, called Bertha's Tower after my grandmother, and she really encouraged me to follow a life of adventure, photography, videography, and really ask the question, why ration passion? This is my grandmother Bertha here, and this is with my, gran my grandfather Harold, and I want to talk about him a little bit. They both grew up in North Dakota, and when my grandfather was 14 years old, he saw a photo of Yosemite National Park, and he hitchhiked, rode trains, and basically ran away from home to be in Yosemite National Park, and he was obsessed. And so that rebellion, that pursuing of passion was really inspiring to me, and he made his way to Yosemite, and that's where we grew up. And if it hadn't been for his passion, uh, going out there, I would have never started climbing and moved to Yosemite National Park. So thanks to my grandfather, Harold. Thanks to my grandmother, Bertha. Huge inspirations in my life. I've taken these explorations, of course, all over the world to the coldest, to the hottest places, and everything in between. We're going to check out a, another favorite place of mine. And this was, you heard me talk about pre-joy. This trip, let's just say it had quite a lot of pre-joy. Into the jungles of Uapo in Marquesas Islands, if you can see those towers, for someone like me, an obsessed, even addicted climber to go and find first ascents around the world. It was another great collaboration. Uh, we shared a lot of these stories with National Geographic and uh, partnered with Dell. And I think uh, that title speaks for itself on this jungle trip, When Tough Meets Tech. One of the things I do on expeditions, um, aside from photography, videography, directing, producing, is testing product. And in the efforts to see if we can take it to the real lab and really test it and make it better in the future. So we did test some, some tech out here for Dell. And we took their rugged product up on the portal ledge in, in the rain and humidity and just the immaculate mayhem and madness. And please enjoy this really fun little adventure. We're here in Uapo. We have a ton of climbing gear. We're testing out the Dell Latitude 12 Rugged Extreme. You were trying to climb huge world-class new routes on big towers. This right here is actually not to be revealed yet. It's only for the summit. We're fired up, we're going in the jungle. The key is blood, sweat, and tears. It's gonna take everything we have. Just mystery, and you know what mystery brings. Brings adventure. Oh, we've been in the jungle a few days. We're starting to shuttle loads, try to gain the access to the actual tower, actually get on solid rock. One of the main things I need to do is take imagery of the wall load it onto the computer, and then zoom in and map out my actual route. There's a system that comes up, you can see these cracks here, Yeah. through here, kind of meanders up here. There's definitely protection there, mystery. and then mystery into the summit. Michael Becky is an adventurer. He is absolutely badly in love with his daughter. Yo, yo, what's up, Lil? So I'm calling you from, hi. hi, I'm calling you from the middle of the jungle. There's a huge rock tower to the left of me. <laughs> Look at that big smile. <laughs> my happy place is, is pretty simple. Anything, everything, anywhere with my daughter. I mean, being a father is the happiest thing in my life. <laughs> All right, love you and miss you. I'll talk to you guys again soon so many expeditions and she's going on 12 years old but now being able to connect with her while in the field and see each other and talk i mean it's just heartwarming it's there's nothing more important on these trips than being able to stay in touch we've got a line we've got a route and we've got psych and we're going to try to get up this massive tower 
Mike and I went out and he started leading the first pitch. Some of the rock was really good underneath all of the jungle. Are you all right, Mike? Yeah. It's slippery. That was some of the craziest climbing I've ever seen. That was a moment of realization for me. Like, this is going to be not the type of climbing that I expected. It, it was kind of foreshadowing of like what this whole thing was going to be. When I said jungle mayhem, I meant it. I went back up and got past it. We've got progress, and uh, we're going up. The past technology that I'll bring up here will fail, especially in the jungle, the humidity just getting beaten down. The rugged extreme, it's taking a beating, and as you can see, we're all taking a beating. After the first couple pitches, I could take it or leave it. I've just put a lot of hours into Blaying and cleaning. Blood, sweat, and tears. Well, there hasn't been really tears yet. Oh, uh, yeah, there have. There have? On my end. Oh. It's just cut open those scabs from yesterday. I'm gonna roll with it. Not the first, not the last. I just don't want Mike to fall. This is scary. I've never done anything even close to this before. I knew it was gonna be wet and muddy and just crazy. It's gonna be beautiful, but it's also gonna be painful and everything we have to go out there and survive and climb. A completely different experience of climbing than she's ever had. And it was just so refreshing to feel her psych because that's really what it takes on these trips. Are you on the summit? No, but we're not too far from there, it looks like. It's gonna be really hard to clean. If you're not ready to crush and give it everything you have until you have no more, you have to have that on these expeditions. Total mayhem and mystery and the unknown every day, every minute. It took everything I had, it took everything that she had for us to go up and hit that summit. Here you go, boys. Do it. Yeah. Summit. This is another fun thing that we're trying to do with storytelling, and that is shooting 360 video and make them into virtual reality experiences. And so this is an unstitched 360 video. If we can bring people as close to going with us without actually going, we're succeeding on storytelling. And again, if we're creating that emotion, maybe people are going to care more about our planet. I wanna share with you a little uh, behind the scenes video here, so please, Enjoy. My name is Mike Lebecki. I'm a National Geographic Explorer and Dell Ambassador. My lifestyle isn't just about climbing first ascents or exploring the unknown, or the humanitarian or conservation work I do. These expeditions are only as good as the stories we bring home in hopes to inspire others to embrace and explore our beautiful Mother Earth. Mm. We are here in our Dell editing suite, currently working on 8K and 3D virtual reality footage and stories from humanitarian work and lab test expeditions to India, Mongolia, and China. All are Dell partnered projects. The power of an experience in virtual reality can create human emotion. 
And there is nothing more powerful than human emotion. It can change our lives and the world. Through technology, storytelling has evolved. And working with cutting edge Dell workstations, I am sharing my adventures in ways I'd never imagined before. With their state of the art tools, I've been able to bring people to some of the most remote places on the planet through films, photos, and 360 virtual reality videos. I'm here with my storytelling partner, Margaret King, master filmmaker and editor who is bringing these incredible stories to life. We're using the latest Dell workstations, monitors, and canvas for our post-production. Virtual reality is an incredibly demanding workflow, and the Dell Precision makes creating these kind of films possible. I'm constantly jumping in and out of Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects in a virtual reality environment. The high resolution and processing power of these precision workstations are really what we need to handle the 3D and 8K resolution footage for the fastest, most efficient workflow for these projects. With great adventures comes great storytelling, and Dell makes it possible to share these stories with the world. Technology is making the impossible possible, and ultimately for the greater good. I cannot wait to see what the future holds. These virtual reality experiences we collaborated with Dell, National Geographic, showing things in ways we never thought possible. I want to shift gears a little bit into my favorite story, and this is with my daughter Liliana Lebecki. We don't get to choose where we're born or what we're born as but we can choose what we do with the time we have in this world. I started asking myself the question, what can I do to give back to humanity, to the animals, to this planet? Because we're all in this together, and in a way, we're all one big family that calls this planet our home. If you're not giving back, then you're not doing your part. You cannot be an explorer or an outdoors person unless you are also giving back to this planet. That is a prerequisite as a human. One thing is I think the most important thing in a life is really a family. Family where you can lean on. Family where you can share your challenges, your difficulties, your joy. And family where you can trust is the foundation of our life. There are so many orphans in this region. So many children are hopeless. As an orphan, it was facing my own reality. Yamse Gasal is a place of transformation. We all are here together to heal ourselves and heal the world. We have about 90 kids at the community. All of the children who are at Jamsigatsal come from backgrounds of trauma, or they come from a background of you know, loss in their young lives before they came to the community. If you give love and you try to understand what a person's going through, you're compassionate to them, that will help them come out of the tragedies that they have faced in their life, or whatever trauma it is that they're going through. We are in a very, very remote area of India. From the nearest airport, you have to travel 17 hours to get into this village. Given where we are located, sustainability is very, very important. There would be times when there would be no electricity for three or four days. For education, we need computers. Technology will allow those who want to go out into the world to get college educations. We need solar, computers, and internet. It's one of the maybe biggest obstacles for our learning, for our health, for our life, and everything. We assembled a team to go to Jump Stake It's All to help the community. Dell's mission statement is using technology for human advancement. Mike came to me and said, you know, we've, we'd like to continue this humanitarian effort. And we'd done something a little bit different in the past, but we didn't actually partner on the people front. And then the conversation led to, why don't we send some Dell people on the trip? The importance of technology for today's education system can't be underestimated. We're actually setting up the infrastructure, power, solar systems, the computers themselves, the networking systems for these students to be computer literate and for kids to be able to get into college. Literally every aspect of life is impacted by the internet and having access to that information 
in a fast, easy to use manner, it affects every aspect of life. We're bringing technology and opening the minds of children who haven't had this opportunity in the past. The majority of them are actually seeing a computer for the first time. This will actually allow them to see other parts of the world without actually having to leave. When we go for higher education, they give the exam through the computers. They give assignments, we have to write in the computer, and uh, for this, I think computers are, we really need to know. If you don't have education, I don't think you are able to necessarily break the circle of poverty. The computers will prepare them for life beyond Jamsegatso. Goal Zero is bringing solar panels, battery systems, and lighting. Light means life in a lot of these communities. Being able to have education is the ability to rise above. So to have uninterrupted power, to be able to provide for their students with just our solar power, our batteries, our lights. When you don't have a light, what happens is your life becomes very short. A project like this provides a certain level of empowerment. It allows kids to have access to technology, uh, to computers and things that we're powering, as well as just lights at night, something that they can read by and do homework, or even just stay safe. Uh, a lot of the children here are also interested in uh, renewable energy. One of the students actually said that he wants to grow up and, and, be, and, and make solar panels himself. That's actually amazing. These children are taking this into their own lives and they want to implement it and be an ambassador for change later on in their lives. We always look for whatever we can do for these communities, so we handed out hundreds of pairs of shoes and socks. Projects like these, they fuel a fire inside of you to be a better person, do good, be kind, live your life in a way that is helping others. There's no way we can start our day and spend our day and end our day without gratitude. Dr. Martin Luther King he said, you know, before we finish our breakfast, we are already relied on half of the world. We are all interconnected. We're all dependent on each other. If we all work to make the lives of others a little better, I believe we can change the world. Some of the words that would describe this experience would be appreciation. Joy. Unbelievable. Spectacular. Fantastic. Gratitude. Deep love. Mindfulness. Surreal. Surreal. Enlightening. It's enlightening. Experience of a lifetime. Life changing. Life changing. Life changing. Life changing. It's life changing. It's life changing. It's going to save people's lives. It's going to create amazing futures of many children we have right now and many more to come. I want to inspire people to think that it's normal to give back, especially people my age. We are the future, and as we grow up, we should be thinking that it's normal to be kind and do good for this planet. Big shout out to Dell for the support and teamwork on these give back trips. I think we all know what time it is. Really appreciate everyone's time and energy today. Thanks again, you guys, for showing up today and watching this. Uh, stay happy and healthy, and of course, Hope the time is now, life is sweet, and remember that question, why ration passion? I think we're going to shoot over to uh, Q&A now, and uh, let's have a little discussion. See you soon in uh, out of the avatar form.